Good energy reviews. We're coming down the home stretch of Spader Timber. And today we got the 1990 film Bad Influence. Bad Influence is a little bit different than other Spader films we've been reviewing. We saw him as a bad guy. We saw him as a rebellious youth. Well, this time he's going to play a straight up fucking nerd. In this movie, Spader plays a financial analyst. He's kind of like the wimpy nerd of his office, always getting kicked around, always getting passed over for promotions. In fact, when the movie opens up, his files done got stolen by some uh, sleazy motherfucker that he's competing against for a promotion. We cut to after having a bad day at work. Spader goes to a local bar to have a fucking beer. He sits down. This fucking girl comes in. She can't find her wallet and all this shit, so Spader, just be nice, buys her a fucking drink. Next thing you know, her asshole boyfriend comes in. Fucking start some shit. God tells Spader to get lost. Spader just fucking stays where he is drinking his beer. Next thing you know, this fucking big motherfucker. He kind of looks like a big jacked up Michael Bay. You know, Michael Bay has that fucking long hair coming all down and shit. But then he's like, face is all lean. He's always got a polo shirt on. This, this motherfucker. That's who this is in this movie. Next thing you know, Rob Lowe walks in the bar, breaks a beer bottle fucking on the table, getting ready to stab this big Michael Bay fucker. Helps James Spader out. Spader kind of like sees what's going on. He's like, oh shit. You know, he turns around to think Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe's just fucking gone. So a couple days later, Spader, he's out jogging. He sees Rob Lowe out in the pier. He goes there, hey man, you know, I, you know, I didn't get a chance to thank you and all that shit. Thank you, man. That was really cool what you did. So they get in a fucking talk. Next thing you know, they're going out. They go to a fucking bar together. Fucking Spader's open up about what happened at work. This motherfucker fucking him over. So fucking Rob Lowe's like, here, let's toast. Let's toast to that guy. Give him credit. He's a go-getter and all this shit. He's fucking you over, but let's drink to him. Spader's like, nah, I ain't gonna drink that motherfucker. Rob Lowe's insistent. Come on, man, drink to him. And finally Spader's like, all right, to drink to him. And then Rob Lowe fucking bitch slaps James Spader and says, what kind of man are you? Fucking drink to your enemies, you nerdy son of a bitch. James Spader gets pissed off. He starts to walk out. Rob Lowe's like, hey, listen, man, I was just doing that to prove a point, you know? That fire that you had in you when you got pissed off, that's the fire you needed to fucking, when you go into work, and handle this motherfucker. The next day at work, this greasy motherfucker had been fucking over James Spader. He's in a big meeting. He goes to find his report, and that shit's fucking gone. Fucking Spader not only erased it, but he replaced it with a bunch of batting average uh, fucking champions and shit from baseball. It's a fucking great scene. So as the story moves along, Spader and Rob Lowe, they become buddies and shit. This being the 80s, Fucking, of course, Rob Lowe and Jane Spader are partying all the time. They're doing a bunch of blow. They go to these crazy underground parties and bars. They go to this one underground bar. And it's real funny. It's real quick. You gotta catch it. It's just one shot. But there's like a nerdy motherfucker <laughs> standing there. And you go, this nerdy motherfucker looks familiar. Who is this? So you look closely. And this nerdy motherfucker with kind of long hair slicked back with some nerd glasses on. You look closely. Fucking David Duchovny. David Duchovny just standing at the bar playing the nerd. The cutaway, he's gone. Like, But it's just funny to see a fucking David Duchovny playing a fucking extra in a movie you know you don't you don't see that in movies too often having a good time at the bar they meet a couple girls fucking rob Lowe. he starts getting all over this one girl played by lisa zane next thing you know spader Lowe, and her they're going back to spader's spader's got an awesome apartment man it's all glass and fucking metal and shit it's really fucking he's got a loft that goes upstairs and shit it's really fucking cool next thing you know spader's passed out and uh, fucking Rob Lowe gets up, the girl gets up, she tried to go fuck Rob Lowe. And Rob Lowe's like, hey, why don't you fuck my friend, you know? James Spader and this girl, they get it on. Rob Lowe tapes it and jerks off in the corner. Fucking next day, Spader wakes up like, oh, what happened and shit, man? He got the videotape on. Spader's like, I fucked that girl. And the reason it's a big deal is Spader's actually engaged to some, like, annoying yuppie girl and that's another thing that's funny too man like rob lowe's videotaping people having sex jerking off and shit and there was like a little scandal in the 80s where rob lowe fucked some girls on some videotapes and it all got out and everybody got all upset and shit so i, I really give rob lowe credit man like a lot of people just see him as a pretty boy but rob lowe had some balls as an actor man back in the day i like to see him in more like little slimy roles like this like you really think at this point in time that this movie's just about these guys Fucking becoming friends, living the high life together and stuff, having good times, and then the movie takes a fucking turn. Basically what happens is Spader goes to a big fucking, you know, dinner party with a bunch of stuffy ass yuppie motherfuckers, you know, his future in-laws and stuff. Rob Lowe shows up with some fake fucking fake ass French accent. He says, oh, I got a videotape I want everybody to see. He throws a videotape in. The whole fucking place... Spader's fiance, her parents, they watch the fucking video of Spader fucking that other girl, man. And it's just like a riot, everybody wants to kill them and shit. So Rob Lowe and Spader, they gotta run out of the party, jump in the car, fucking get away. 
Spader's like, holy fucking shit, man, my life is over. And then Rob Lowe's like, I did you a fucking favor, man. I got you out of marrying that bitch. You were going to be unhappy. You are going to be miserable. What about this other girl you fucked on the videotape? That's the kind of girl you need to be going after and all this. So they go on a wild night to get drunk. You know, Spader's really tying one on now. He's really snorting a lot of fucking blow. They're out, they're drunk, end of the night, man, gotta get something to eat. So they go to like a little diner and shit, and the kid's cooking up a hamburger. Next thing you know, Rob Lowe's robbing me this motherfucker, putting a gun in his head, fucking make a spader, fucking grab the cash and run out and do all this shit. They drive away, spader's like, oh my god, what we just do? He starts throwing up and all this shit. Rob Lowe's like, no, don't pussy out, we're gonna keep going. So they go on, they rob some liquor stores, eventually they show up at the house of the greasy motherfucker that was fucking spader over at his job, they beat his ass, they don't show it. Like there's a little twist and turn reason why they don't show it. But anyway, next day Spader shows up. He's all fucking hung over. His knuckles all beat up. He's like, what happened last night? Finds out this fucking guy that was fucking with him work. Totally got his ass beat. Withdraws from the fucking promotion. So Spader gets his job promotion and shit. And he's like, holy shit, man. Things are looking up. But I'm just living this out of control life and shit. I gotta stop hanging out with fucking Rob Lowe and all this. So he cuts everything off of Rob Lowe. He's like, you're a fucking psychopath. We can't be friends no more. And then Rob Lowe really starts to turn up the heat. Start fucking him. Basically, then what Rob Lowe does, because he has the keys to Spader's apartment, he goes in and he robs it. And I'm not talking about he comes in and goes through some Georgia shit. He robs it. Spader comes home from work and fucking everything in the apartment's gone. All the furniture, fucking the dishes, the fucking, just every, everything gone. There's nothing. It just looks like an empty apartment and nobody living. Spader's like, holy shit, man, what the fuck happened? Next thing you know, Spader has to go live with his dorky fucking brother, who, you know, had some drug charges in the past. Now he just smokes pot in his fucking little shitty apartment, all paranoid and shit. So Spader's hanging out with him. Meanwhile, Rob Lowe's getting up to some devious shit. He lures that girl that Spader fucked on the videotape to Spader's apartment, saying, like, oh, he needs to see you and shit. She gets there, fucking pulls some sinister shit. He fucking beats her to death with a golf club videotaping and shit. Next thing you know, Spader fucking comes back to his apartment a couple days later, finds blood on the walls, finds a fucking videotape, puts it in, realizes Rob Lowe killed her. Then he goes and he fucking finds the body and he's like, oh shit, what am I going to do? So basically, Spader, man, he has to really turn evil now, even though he don't want to. Him and his naughty brother, they get together, they dispose of the girl's body. Rob Lowe's watching them the whole time. He tells the cops where they fucking dispose of the body, so the cops find a body right away. Shit is just getting really fucking turned up. And at this point... You know, Rob Lowe's really financially clean fucking Spader out. There ain't no much more he can do, but he just wants to fuck with him, fuck with him, twist and turn the knife. And that's why Rob Lowe's so great in this movie. Just play an evil motherfucker. Spader and his dorky brother, they have to find a way to fucking trap, you know, fucking Rob Lowe, because or else, they, you know, dude, fucking shit's just gonna, you know, keep escalating until fucking somebody's dead. Basically, in the movie, you know, they're trying to get him so they can take him to the cops. But then a lot of shit happens, there's an exciting chase with Rob Lowe and James Spader. And then it all comes down to an end, which instead of just keep going more over the top with the fucking action and shit, they really boil it back down to the dialogue and the relationship between James Spader and Rob Lowe. Bad influence being the type of movie it is, I don't think there's many more fucking like little sleazy erotic thrillers out there that are, you know, as good or at, you know, on the level as this one. So I'm gonna give Bad Influence as a movie, I'm gonna give it 8 out of 10. Picture and sound, this being a fucking DVD, of course we're not going to get like what we really want to get, we're going to get some DVD old shit. This movie really is like a film noir, like the old fucking movies, there's a lot of scenes with shadows up on people's faces and shit, the darkness, the blackness, you know, and the DVD, that's that's kind of like where I got to nick it, is it, it doesn't really come out with the deep blacks that we want, I, you know, this is the type of movie I would really like to see on Blu-ray one day, doesn't look bad, doesn't look great. The sound, unfortunately, is some fucking stereo. It, I mean, it's not bad, it's clear, you can hear everything they're saying and stuff. The picture and sound being just okay, I gotta give it six and a half out of ten. Special features, this being a fucking kind of like an unknown movie, whatever, of course we're gonna get fucked again. All we got is a theatrical trailer, which, don't watch the theatrical trailer. Like, just watch the movie, because Jack the Trailer is going to give away some of the best lines, especially Rob Lowe's little sleazy evil shit. It also has a jacket picture, which means when you hit stop on the DVD player while you're watching it, like, the poster comes up. Instead of just being that plain screen, it's just a stop. shows, like, a nice image of the poster and stuff. So special features, unfortunately, I can only go one and a half out of ten. Spader Timber, we got one more fucking week to go, James Spader fans. I wish it was one of the months where we had five Wednesdays so I could do an extra James Spader movie, but hey, there's always fucking next year. 